episode two of the Spinning Dreams podcast. Um, my name is Laura, and I hope this finds you well. Um, yeah, a lot has happened since the last time that I spoke to you, so I'm very happy to be back with you to record again and to have a chat. So yeah, get your tea or coffee or whatever it is that you drink <laughs> and um, take a seat and I'll get started. So last time I spoke to you, we were in England, in Oxfordshire, and since then we've actually moved. So I'll talk a little bit about that, um, and that's been kind of hectic, but we're in, we're moved, and it feels really good to be in our own space. So we have that, and then um, we have a lot, I have a lot to share. Um, so I'm hoping it won't be too long of an episode. We'll see how it goes. Um, so I'll keep it going. Um, and yeah, I mean, a lot has been going on in the world. So actually, before I get started, I just wanted to mention that, um, you know, we've been going through a lot um, worldwide. There's been a lot going on with the pandemic. Um, and, you know, that's <clears throat> been a challenge for all of us, I think, in different ways, and I think, you know, it can take a hit, you know, we can take a hit creatively, I think, from it, and I think that's worth mentioning, um, you know, when we're all in this state of, kind of, um, stress and mourning as well, some of us are mourning, um, it's sometimes, you know, a time for quiet and for reflection, and there are different seasons of our lives. And um, I think, <clears throat> thankfully, we've been safe here, um, safe in all of our, you know, the places that we've lived. And I hope the same for you. You know, I hope that you're safe and staying healthy. Um, but it has, I have noticed that it has taken some time for me to become creatively inspired again and to just look at things um, with different eyes, you know, without fear or um, insecurity about the future. So, um, I mean, there's still all of that going on in the background. <clears throat> so if you find yourself you know, struggling right now with the creativity, I would say you're definitely not alone. And I'm going to get into all of the creative things, but it's not that I, you know, I haven't been, you know, in my low points as well. So <clears throat> I just wanted to mention that and also just um, put out my best wishes for you for this season, this hard season. And I hope that you're staying well and um, that you aren't finding it over too overwhelming. Um, the other thing I wanted to talk about, which has been um, very important and has had a lot of focus, um, rightly so, is um, Black Lives Matter. And I have been challenged by this season of, um, you know, learning and just doing my best to try to understand. I mean, I know I can't understand, but I also am trying to read and keep up with the people that I know in my circle who are um, people of color or, you know, of different cultures and heritages. And um, yeah, I think it's been really humbling for me and, but really good. And I am, looking forward to what I'll continue to learn um, through this season and I I just wanted to say something about it because I feel like it's really it's on my mind all the time and I'm talking to friends and family about it and I'm sure it is for you as well um, in one way or another and so I think you know we're together in that as well and I think it's important to talk about it and to recognize that we are all a part of it, whether um, we're coming from one angle or another. Um, I think wherever we are in the world, we're all a part of it. And 
and um, yeah, I think um, I'm reading a couple of books right now, and maybe I'll mention that at the end as well. Um, but yeah, just to encourage you, I'm also doing some work on that, and that you're not alone, um, that it, it can feel overwhelming to learn so much and to, to see how you failed in the past. But um, I think what the overwhelming response to that from the black community has been just, you know, accept that you've been wrong and move on and keep learning and do your best. And that's what I'm trying to do. And I think that's what we can all do. So um, I think, yeah, we all make mistakes and we all can learn. So that's what I wanted to say in the beginning of this episode. Um, just to, to recognize some of those things. Um, and yeah, I think moving on now, I am so happy that we've moved. Um, I think it's been just a lot of transition for us. And so I'm really happy that we're now in our own home and we have our own space and it's just really special. And we were in England and now we're in Wales, believe it or not. <laughs> so we're in the Welsh countryside, which has been amazing so far. It's beautiful. We've never, either of us have lived, neither of us have lived here before. We visited, Mark visited when he was a boy, but neither of us have ever spent time here living here. Um, so we're in the southern part of Snowdonia which is a mountainous area of Wales. And we're by the sea as well, which is just amazing <laughs> to be in the hills and the countryside and the sea. I don't know, it's just perfect, basically. <laughs> That's how I feel about it right now. So not to rub it in, but <laughs> we are really happy. And um, you'll be hearing more about Wales and Welsh life probably um, from this corner. We're learning a little bit of Welsh, both of us. Um, Mark has definitely sped ahead of me, um, but we're both yeah, trying to pick up little bits here and there. So that's been fun. We both love learning languages, so that's energizing in its own way. So now that we've moved, you know, of course there's all the, <laughs> the little things that we need to get sorted in the house. But now that we've moved, I feel like we can focus a bit differently now that we have our space. We were really happy in the previous places, the temporary homes that we were in, you know, and that was just what we needed when we needed it. Um, but yeah, there's nothing like having your own place. Um, so I think that will, you know, just give some momentum and some a feeling of being settled so that we can move forward on the different things that we're excited about. Um, so yeah, that's our move. <laughs> so welcome to Wales. Um, I think I can move into my knitting now. Um, that's probably enough about life <laughs> in general. Today I'm drinking peppermint and honey tea, which is really tasty. Um, so yeah, let me move into my finished objects. I think last time I talked about my pillow cover that I was crocheting and that went really well and I finished it, but I don't have it here with me because I actually gifted it to the hosts of our previous house. Their decor <laughs> worked perfectly with the pillow, or the pillow worked perfectly with their decor. Either way. Um, and so I thought we're just so grateful to them for hosting us and we thought this is perfect, like one of the things we wanted to leave with them. So I'll insert a photo here for you to see the finished object. Um, so that's finished and I'm really happy about that. It was a great thing to work on. Now you can go back to the first episode to see more about that. Um, the second finished object is the shawlette that I mentioned in my first episode. Um, and you can see that it has been blocked, <laughs> but it has also been moved. So it's 
a little bit crumpled. <laughs> but I think it turned out really well, in my humble opinion, <laughs> um, in that it's doing what I wanted it to do. It has the lace bits, it has the, the eyelet and the stock in it, it has the ruffle at the end, um, and it should be just right. Oh, got something on it, something from moving. <laughs> Um, it should drape well on a ballerina's shoulders, which if you know from the last episode, this is a shawlette for one of my nieces, and I have another one on the needles for my other niece. Um, I ran out of the yarn that I needed, so I'm ordering some to finish the other one, but I'm pretty much done with this project. I'm at the end of the other one as well, so yay! I think it's, it's good, I feel. I think they'll think the same as well, it's super soft. And if you, I, there are show notes about this in the last episode, talking about the yarn that I used, it's basically a lot of silk mohair. <laughs> um, and some other bits. Um, but yeah, take a look at my Ravelry page as well. Um, you can find me on Ravelry, I think I'm just Laura N. Woodward, or maybe it's just Laura Woodward. I'll put that down below. But yeah, I just wrote notes up for it for myself. I don't have a pattern of this one. Um, but if you're interested, I could maybe refine it a bit. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> um, so that's that done. I feel very pleased with that. Um, and that was my own design. I don't know if I mentioned that, but yeah, that was my own design. So that's why I only have notes. Um, mittens. That's my next finished object is mittens. Um, these were completely spontaneous. I just felt like doing some color work. And so you can see, hopefully, this is Let Lopi. And it's leftover from my husband's sweater, the one that I showed last time, the Radari. And I just wanted something, you know, warm and rustic and wintry. And they're really nice, I think. <laughs> um, again, my own random pattern that I just wrote down for myself. And um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what else to say about them. They're just rustic and fluffy and will keep us warm. And they should fit both of us. I made them a little bit big so that they would fit my husband as well. And so that whoever's going outside can just grab them and on their way out and that should work. So yeah, that's the Let Lopi Icelandic wall again. Um, and that was really fun and easy, an easy knit. The last finished object that I wanted to show you is actually what I'm wearing um, right now. So it's an older finished object in that it was finished last year. But I wanted to wear it today. <laughs> um, it's nice to wear hand knits when you're doing a knitting podcast. So I wore it for today and um, I thought I would talk about it. It's the Leia sweater by Marzina Kolacek. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm probably not. <laughs> um, but it's a really lovely pattern. I'll link to it. It's um, It has a bit of lace. It's a top-down, simple design. It has lace at the top here and a bit of a garter panel under the lace and then three-quarter sleeve and just, you know, normal length, nothing long or just kind of at the waist. It has a bit of shaping um, and let me see if I can turn a bit and you can see if I can show you the lace a bit. Um, you can kind of see it probably in the front here, but then, yeah, in the back as well, it just, it wraps around. It's really beautiful, I think, and, um, yeah, at the beginning of round is at the back, so there's, you know, when you're, when you're, um, changing for garter or for lace, you have a bit of a, a meeting point at the beginning of the round, so it is visible, but it's very tidy, I think, um, it doesn't look funny at all. <laughs> To me, I think it's very normal to have, you know, a line at the back of something, um, or even at the front. 
but I think it's better at the back probably. Um, I really want to do this again. This one was in um, Cascade, uh, what is it? Cascade Heritage Solids. And it was gifted to me by my sister-in-law, Helen, thank you. Um, and it's in like kind of a lilac colorway, which is great for spring so or summer, and so I feel good wearing it right now. Um, but I think I want to do like another version of it, maybe with full length sleeves, where it's maybe more of a rustic, thicker, maybe not thicker, but Maybe more like a woolen spun, because this, I'm pretty sure, is a worsted spun wool. Um, which, as far as I am aware, the worsted spun is kind of more of a smooth, um, straight yarn preparation um, or spin. And so you get higher definition, less fluff, more silky smooth drape, um, which looks great on this. And I think I love the way this looks. I love the way it turned out, I think. It has a bit of nylon in it too, I think, this this Cascade yarn. So it'll wear really well, I think, over time. Um, but if you get a if you do a wool and spun yarn, then you get more fluff. Um, it's it's not as combed, it's um, more of a jumbled <laughs> for lack of a technical word for lack of a better technical word, jumbled um, preparation where the the strands or the the single um, pieces of fiber are kind of interwoven a bit more when you spin it so that it has a lot more air and loft to it um, and so your finished yarn is less smooth less um, like defined and I think that could be really cool with lace like I think that could look really nice and and it would be just a bit maybe a bit warmer I think wool and spun yarn is a bit warmer so if I did do a full length sleeve then it might be good for like autumn time or late winter is what I was thinking so I would probably be revisiting this one in the future because I just I love it and I want to wear it more <laughs> but there are, especially in Wales I think but even in England there aren't many opportunities or as many opportunities for this for me especially since I run cold I tend to have goosebumps like even now in my house I have goosebumps in this sweater so I think you know and it's in the middle of the summer so yeah I run cold <laughs> so I think I need a little bit more warmth sometimes so yeah that's maybe in my future another Leia sweater so that's that that's actually all of my finished objects right now so we're moving on to works in progress um, and I have a few yeah um, and mostly sweaters so um, and then later on I'll talk about something else that's very exciting to me that is also a work in progress, but it'll be in my acquisitions, so you'll see. But right now, I think I mentioned last time, I am working on, or I had, La Bien um, their Merino DK, and some silk mohair to combine to make the Magnolia Chunky Sweater, or Cardigan. And I started it, and it's going really well. I really love it. Let me show you. Um, so I've got the body on, and I've almost finished the body. I'm at the very end of the lace, just going into a twisted rib, which is how it ends, the body. Um, and I don't know if you can see here, there are some nups. This is a pattern by Camilla Vad, and she yeah she uses nups, not bubble bobbles, <laughs> um, which are slightly different. They just worked a little bit differently, I think, and they are fine. Like they work up really well um, with the nups. I'm using I should mention I'm using Kristen of Volenvine's bobble tutorial. 
I'll link to it. She has this fun tutorial on how to make your bobbles pop, um, which if you've done bobbles before, or if you haven't, um, bobbles can tend to sink back into the fabric that you've just kind of have as a backdrop for them. So they can kind of recede. And <laughs> the whole point of a bobble is to like, big texture popping out. Um, and so it's kind of disappointing when your bobbles sink to the background. Um, so she showed this way um, where you can, what she calls, choke the bobble, which is basically strangling, <laughs> strangling the bobble with a piece of yarn that you're, work you're working yarn. And she shows you how to do it. She does it with bobbles, which are a bit different to the nuts in the, in the um, Magnolia Chunky Cardigan, but it worked fine. I just still could strangle my nup <laughs> and it has made them pop a lot more, I think. Let me see if I can show you an example. Hopefully you're seeing that. Um, they're really popping and I think that will be fine. So yeah, I'm just past the lace, as I said, and I've got the sleeves on hold. So top-down construction where the sleeves go on hold and you continue down the body. Then later you pick up the sleeves to work them each individually. And then at the end, you um, to finish the button band, you pick up stitches along here. So right now it's kind of rolling in on itself, but it will have a, I think it's a twisted rib um, button band, if I remember correctly, which matches the twisted rib collar here, the, the neck band, and the twisted rib, um, what do you call that, hem, hemline, and probably the cuff too on the sleeves, which I haven't looked at yet, but I'm pretty sure that it's all twisted rib. So I'm really loving it. I love the color. It's very dramatic. <laughs> Not my normal everyday color, I don't think. Um, but I said last time that I really wanted a fancy evening sweater where, or just whenever sweater, but for something just where I wanted to be a bit more <laughs> fancy, because I don't have a lot of that and I'm needing more of that maybe. Not a lot, but just for special occasions. Could go well with um, something that I wear to a wedding or a funeral or things like that where you want to look a little bit more special. Um, so I'm really pleased with the wool. It's everything that I could have dreamed of. <laughs> um, and I'm just really loving working with something that reminds me of our special holiday, like I mentioned, to France. As I mentioned, we went there last year, and um, it's just really special, I think, to have a souvenir that is um, something I can then create from. Um, so I'm working a lot with this wool, <clears throat> and then after that, I'll wear it and remember my trip from, you know, yeah, 2019 or whatever. And I think that's really special. It's to me more special than picking up something that will just sit in one place. I really love interacting with, with it and it feels like I'm carrying on my memory of the trip and I think of my trip a lot when I'm, when I'm knitting it. So that's special. That's been really special. Um, so that's that work in progress. The next um, work in progress is actually, um, I wanted another cardigan. <laughs> um, I had the fancy one on the go and I wanted one that was more like down to earth and everyday, something that I could throw on to go out to the garden or go into town, but also had a classic feel to it that um, it wasn't fancy, but it wasn't super ordin ordinary. I don't know if that's the right word, but let me just cut to the chase. <laughs> the wool that I have is um, Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool, um, which I used when I was younger. 
and um, I haven't used it since. Like I probably used it when I was a teenager and I thought, oh, that might be good. And it's in a nice neutral color in the oatmeal color. I think that's what it's called, oatmeal. And um, it's 100% wool. It is, I think, pretty long lasting. I've heard some people say that it will pill under high friction. Excuse me. Um, but I'm not too worried. Like, I think it'll be okay for an everyday garment. And here's my swatch. Um, I think on four millimeter, four millimeter needles. Um, and the pattern that I've chosen is the botanist sweater or the botanist cardigan by um, Thea Coleman or um, Tiny Cocktails, I think she also goes by. And it's really beautiful. I'll link to it. I think it's beautiful. It's um, a cable design sweater um, that is kind of updated. So when you think of a fisherman cable Aaron sweater, you often think like big and boxy and kind of oversized, which it isn't exactly not boxy, but it is just the way that she's designed it is maybe a bit more dainty and less chunky looking. The cables are a bit finer and um, there's just maybe a bit more detail, if I could say it that way. I'm not sure how else to describe it, but if you go look at it, um, look at her photos and the finished projects on Ravelry and things, it's beautiful, a beautiful design, so I'm really happy to try it. I think it's going to be a bit of a challenge, but I'm up for it. <laughs> um, and I think it'll be classic, and yet um, every day, which is what I'm looking for. So I'm pretty excited about that. Sorry I don't have more to share <laughs> except for my little swatch. Um, but it's just to say it's in the works. I have the pattern already. I'm ready to go. Um, I'm trying to finish my, um, Magnolia cardigan kind of before I get too involved in the in the cables <laughs> so that I can, yeah, maybe I'll get onto Sleeve Island on Magnolia and the Magnolia and then go into cable adventures <laughs> on the, on the botanist cardigan. So yeah, that's, that's my other work in progress, um, to do with knitting and I feel like that's enough for me right now. Um, because <laughs> in my acquisitions, you'll see that I have a lot of other stuff going on. So let me grab some tea and I'll get into acquisitions. Okay. So first acquisition, when I was um, trying to wind balls for my Magnolia chunky sweater out of the Silk Mohair by the La Bien Aime Silk Mohair. It's really struggling. I could not get a ball. It just kept catching on itself. It was bad. And I was about ready to throw that stuff out the window. And I love that stuff, so I knew it wasn't the stuff. It was my method for trying to wind the ball. And so I knew for a while that I had been wanting to get a Swift. Um, but I just hadn't, you know, I wasn't settled. I didn't have a space for it really to just, you know, I'm always packing up bags and going from one place to another the last while. And so anyway, I finally got one. Um, and it's this one, which is an Amish tabletop. Hopefully you're seeing that okay. It's kind of big and awkward, but it's an Amish Swift, so it breaks down completely. It's the Chow Gu, it's the Chow Gu version. Um, it breaks down to, you know, all the pieces come apart really easily. So I can say that about it, it's really good. Um, also on this, there are six holes for the dowels to come in and out, and you can adjust that way. Um, it goes from 62 inches is the largest skein you can put on here and then 33 is the smallest. 
Now, we ran into having a skein that was just, just too big for this, but my husband Mark found a solution, which is a bit unconventional, but that's kind of how we roll. Um, he put some toilet paper, yes, toilet paper, um, nice fresh unused toilet paper, on either end of two of these, so kind of opposite each other. Um, when it was on the highest or the biggest setting. And then that made it just big enough for the skein to wrap around and we could wind the ball. So it was, it did the job. Now, I don't expect myself to run into that problem again, but you never know. And so someday I might get an umbrella swift, which I think is a bit more of an adjustable feature for different widths or different diameters of, is that diameter? Different lengths, I guess I should say, of um, skeins. But for now, this is great. For all of the, almost all except for one, of the skeins has been working wonderfully. So I can say Amish Swift is very functional and this one in particular is very good. I got it secondhand, so I can't say that, you know which shop to get it from. I got it on eBay. Um, and I prefer to get things secondhand when I can because it's good. Good for the environment, good for my budget. <laughs> um, and it works really well. It was basically new um, as well, so which I benefit from. Um, so that's my first acquisition. My next acquisition is the one that I'm pretty thrilled about. <laughs> For my birthday, I got an early present, which if you've been following me on Instagram, then you saw already, but it is a spinning wheel, <laughs> which I am still so shocked by because I really thought, I started this whole adventure thinking someday I would love to spin. And yet, here we are. <laughs> Someday has come. And we have a spinning wheel in our house. It's an Ashford Traveler. And that's what I wanted. It's a single drive, for those of you who are interested in that. Um, it has a single, a single treadle. It's not double, which we weren't sure about. But we've never used a spinning wheel before, to be honest. So we didn't notice any difference since it's been in our house we've been using it and single treadle works fine and you know it's beautiful I feel like it's I feel like it's the wood just stunning you know spinning wheels can be quite beautiful I think um, and we didn't have any fiber to start with when we brought it home because it was a spontaneous purchase, because it was actually also secondhand, um, we didn't, we weren't prepared. Like we didn't know we were going to be doing spinning well. We didn't have any fiber to spin. We thought that was like maybe this year, maybe next year. <laughs> so we really didn't have anything ready. So we waited and got some in the post, thankfully, which is my next acquisition. I'll show you. Um, once it came this from Hilltop Fiber, Hilltop Cloud Fiber Shop, um, Hilltop Katie on, in, on Instagram, I'll post below. She, um, yeah, sells this really great. Um, it's a Welsh cross B, uh, BFL, I don't know if that's how you say that, but um, that's what it says here, Welsh X BFL. Um, and it's combed, I think. And I think that's a worsted preparation. So we've been spinning it. I should say Mark has been spinning it because I haven't done as much spinning as he has. Amazingly, he is like really taking off with it, <laughs> which I'm really impressed by. Um, so he's been doing a short forward draw, the drafting method. And that's been producing pretty well, like he's been doing a really good job um, with that. So that's that fiber. 
and I'll show you his progress because, and this is his work in progress, really he should be presenting it, but you know, <laughs> don't know, maybe someday he'll make a, a guest appearance on the podcast, but yeah, here it is, some of his spinning, which I think has turned out really well. So this is plied, it's just a two-ply, um, you know, it looks really good, it works, it's yarn. Um, and here's my first, I knit up a swatch for him to see, we wanted to see what it was making, you know, what weight it is. And I, I used, I think, three millimeter bamboo double-pointed needles to get this. And it's great. It's it's very warm. I can tell already that this is a very warm wool. <laughs> it's kind of dense. Um, because it's we're still working on consistency, it's I could have gone up a couple of sizes of needles toward the end there, but um, you know, as he's been going, and I'll show you in the future, as he's been practicing it's been getting more and more consistent and so we can stick with one needle size most of the time and I think that's going to be great. It's so fun. Like it's so fun to see fiber go, you know, like from the fluff to the knitted object. That's so cool to me and that's exactly what we were dreaming of. These are spinning dreams <laughs> coming to life. So it's very exciting and yeah, now we, I mean, the sky is the limit. We can get any fiber and spin it, which is really exciting to me. <laughs> now that we're in Wales too, I, I mean, I should mention also that that, um, the fiber from Hilltop Cloud is a Welsh um, shop, which is cool. And um, actually all of, well, the next acquisition that I have is also Welsh. Um, I got on my birthday also, or for my birthday, from my sister-in-law, thanks Lizzie, <laughs> Mark's sister. Um, she brought this huge bag of a whole raw fleece um, from their friends um, near Bristol. There's a farm, um, let me see if I can get this right, Saddlescombe Farm. I don't know if I'm saying that right either. And it's Camilla and Rolly, Rolly, um, who have that farm. And the breed of sheep, I think, that they sheared for my fleece um, is called Hleen, Hleen, I think, um, which is from the Hleen Peninsula, I think. Um, which is in Wales. It's not very far from where we are actually. So that's so cool. Like I have this whole raw fleece now and we brought it and we don't know how to prepare it yet. <laughs> we haven't decided if we're gonna get hand carters, a drum carter, combs. We don't have any of that gear yet. So we have a lot of research ahead of us and I think it's it's exciting. I think that's very exciting to research about that and to figure out what we're going to do. And it does feel very much like a family thing now. Mark is really into it and it's just exciting to do that together, I think. Um, so we'll need to make some decisions about that and I'll show you next time. Hopefully the fleece, the raw fleece will have been prepared. We'll see. <laughs> Um, the next thing, also fleecy, is another birthday gift that I got, um, from our hosts from the last place that we were staying. <clears throat> it's more, these are locks from a Wensleydale, Chilton Wensleydale breed. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to pick up on this, but they're a long hair, kind of curly locked fine breed um, and they produce the most amazing curls I think this is I think shows up fairly well because of the color they've dyed it a purpley gray and it's just so fun 
it's just such a fun lock and super soft. Um, so I, they got me this, and then they also got me just um, the undyed locks as well, which I think will be a great base for something. Um, so I have, a, I'm not sure how much I have, but a bag of this, a small, kind of like a, a paper bag full. And it's supposed to be a very fine um, texture, I guess. So I don't know a lot about it, but I'm hoping to learn more and can't wait to start preparing it. It's the way that the farm has processed it, this particular farm, um, they don't use any artificial fertilizers or sprays. And this is the Chilton um, Grounds Farm. Chilton, it was at the Chilton um, Park Medieval Manor. That's what the grounds used to be. And now it's a farm. And they just prepare it minimally in that they don't use chemical, um, anything chemical it seems. And they only wash it in um, rainwater, which that's really cool. <laughs> Um, and so it's very soft and it smells really nice. It smells really good actually. It doesn't smell very sheepy at all. So I don't know how they do that. It's magic. And I can't wait to start working with that as well. Um, so we have a lot of exciting things on the horizon with spinning. And I think that's just so energizing and I can't wait to show you what we've what we produce and our adventures in that and our learning curve because we have a lot to learn. We will be the first to say that we have so much to learn. So if there's anything that you can tell us in the comments below, any recommendations, any ways that you've prepared things like maybe the Wensleydale or um, the clean, clean um, sheep uh, fleece, please let us know. Um, we also, um, winding up now, or winding down now, winding up, <laughs> winding down, um, I have this book, which will hopefully help me a little bit. It's called The Fleece Gui the Field Guide to Fleece by Deborah Robson and Carol Icarius, or Ecar Icarius? Yeah. Um, and it's 100 sheep breeds and how to use their fibers. So I think this, this might actually help me. Um, I got it from my mom for my birthday again. It's a very fleecy birthday. And it just has all the breeds, um, well, not all of them, but a lot of them. And so let me see if I can find Wensleydale in here. Wensleydale, I haven't even looked to see. Oh, there it is, Wensleydale. Yeah, so it goes into the effect of dyes, best uses, the origin, um, I think it has a fair amount of information that I can glean from, and I think that will be really helpful. So I do have a resource, but you know, it's a field guide, so it's not, it's not like an exhaustive, um, encyclopedia of wool or fleece, <laughs> but it will help me, I think, and I'm really happy to have it on hand. So, but yeah, if you have anything else to add, please let me know um, in the comments. And I think generally that's the end for me. I'll mention a couple more things. Um, one is related to Creativity, I mentioned that I was having a bit of a, just a low time or, I don't know, it's not exactly low because it wasn't like negative, it was just more like slow, maybe slow, <laughs> so that I it. a slow creative part of my uh, season just recently. And I typically start gaining momentum in my fiber creativity and then I find I want to start drawing more and painting more. So um, I thought I would show you this, which I also put
post it on my Instagram. Hopefully I'm aiming that correctly. Um, but it's um, just a little ink drawing. Um, very simple. And it's actually from um, a course on Skillshare, which I'm not sponsored <laughs> by Skillshare. I know some people are, but I'm not. I just enjoy um, learning and I think it's a good platform for that. Um, so you can look it up as well if you're interested in that kind of thing. But this is just, um, I'll try and find the link to this course, but is I think Echinacea um, ink and, you know, pen ink drawing. And it was just a really good way to boost myself into um, drawing again. And I think when you're isolated, sometimes you just need that little bit of like contact from someone else who's doing something similar or who has a similar interest. And once you're connected by looking at what they're doing or doing something with them, like in the case with this Skillshare course, she was doing it and then you do it with her, um, the teacher I mean, then I feel like it's kind of a little push in that direction and I feel much more free and, and ready to try again and to do the next um, pen and paper or um, paint and paper project. So the last thing that I wanted to share is about um, Black Lives Matter, which I mentioned in the beginning, and one of the books that I found really helpful is Dr. Maya Angelou's I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings, and it's the first book in her autobiography, <clears throat> which I find really, really interesting in that she's just this writer who brings you and draws you into that life and <clears throat> how she was thinking and what other people might have been thinking and she I don't know you have to read it to know what I'm talking about and I think a lot of people feel that she's just a very extraordinary author extraordinary writer and I think for these times it would be good to read her to read her books and her works and so I started and I thought that would be something that you might be interested in as well so I'll maybe post a link to that as well. Um, and I think there's so many resources out there for this topic. It can be overwhelming, so I found it helpful to hear other people's opinions or their ideas on what to read. And of course, I'm not an expert, but it's just something that I found inspiring. So maybe it would inspire you as well. And I think that's it for me today. Um, for this episode and I hope that that was inspiring for you and that you found um, just some peace and some, I don't know, some quietness maybe um, to just take a moment away from everyday life and reflect on something that's you know, different to the uncertain and the, and the hard things that we're going through. I think we all need those moments, and so I hope that you're able to steal those moments when you can. I know I found that very helpful. Um, and if you have any um, thoughts about, you know, things that have helped you creatively through this time, feel free to share that in the comments. And thank you for introducing yourselves so far. I've really enjoyed it. I really enjoy hearing who you are and um, where you're from and what you're into. I think that's really fun. <laughs> so thank you for sharing and it's really nice to meet you all. Um, please feel free to continue to comment and just, yeah, share your life with me and the others that are there. Um, and yeah, if you have any tips or on creativity, but also on spinning, please feel free, like I said, to share um, your ideas. We need help. <laughs> um, but mostly I just hope that you um, go into this next week or two or three, whenever it is that I next chat with you, um, feeling um, inspired and motivated to 
um, to be okay during this season and to find those little sparks of inspiration from nature or from your surroundings um, or from, yeah, places like this, like an episode like this or from um, other people. There are so many good ones out there um, and I think just gaining that momentum from each other is really helpful, I think, sometimes. So, all the best to you. Please stay safe, stay healthy, um, and be at peace, and um, enjoy your day, and I'll speak to you again. Until next time. Bye!